Well, the finance minister also noted in today's budget communication that the nation's debt is expected to soar and funding cuts across the public sector will be significant. But he says it's one that will meet the demands of the times. He maintains the upcoming budget is focused on protecting the health and safety of Bahamians, providing adequate social support to vulnerable members of the community and stabilizing the domestic economy. Here's Cleopatra Murphy. Government is looking to pause increments, salary increases, as well as defer increases that come with promotions for permanent staff within government-owned agencies. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Peter Turnquest, says it is a part of cost-saving measures government is looking to employ due to the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Deputy Prime Minister says government has begun discussion with unions to gain their support. To be clear, the intent will still be to process and grant promotions as we recognize that some are long overdue. However, the attendant salary increases will be deferred at least until January 2021 when we will have a better view of the circumstances. Similarly, any new appointments will happen on an exceptional basis only. Turnquest says government will also review existing consultancies to determine what can be deferred or cancelled, adding that retirees will be allowed to complete their engagements and contracts will not be renewed in the next year. Government is also looking to reduce subventions to state-owned enterprises, where the Minister of Finance says subventions in the 2019-2020 budget accounted for 16% of recurrent expenditure and is not sustainable. He says the COVID-19 pandemic has spurred the need for reform and those agencies have been called on to implement cost-saving and revenue enhancement measures. We are budgeting to receive some 10% or roughly $21 million in savings from a decrease in subventions to these entities. Over the medium term, it is the intent of the government to further rationalize these entities. The main objective is to push state-owned enterprises to become self-sufficient, thereby alleviating, alleviating the need for the central government to, to subsidize their operations on an annual basis. To this end, we have targeted a $100 million annual reduction in subven subventions over the next four years as these entities move to optimize efficiency and cost recovery strategies. A total of 42 departments and agencies have had their budgets slashed, but Turnquest says care has been taken to avoid cuts to critical areas. Allocations to the Department of Public Health, for example, which now has its own head in the budget, total $45 million. This paired with the allocation to the Ministry of Health constitute funding of over $300 million to the public health care system in the upcoming budget. An increase in allocation of $18.5 million in the previous year. As a result, we have budgeted recurrent spending of $2.6 billion, which is $35.3 million, or 1.4% higher than the revised budget sum of $2.5 billion for the supplementary budget. He assured government will maintain its investment in education, noting a $1.5 million increase to the University of the Bahamas' scholarship initiative and an additional $500,000 to BTVI. As government invests in infrastructural work, capital spending will also increase to $515.5 million. Given these developments, the fiscal deficit is budgeted at some $1.3 billion, or 11.6% of GDP, for the upcoming fiscal year. This is the largest deficit to be incurred by any government in the history of the Bahamas. Conquest says government is working on initiatives to accelerate economic growth, increasing allocation for small business growth and development from $5 million to $55 million in the current budget. He says the passage of Hurricane Dorian has also reinforced the need for the country to make better use of renewable energy, noting that in the 2020-2021 borrowing resolution, government will seek approval for an $80 million IDB loan for Family Island solarization. This is a part of the $170 million contingent credit line for investment projects, or CCLIP, facility over 8 to 10 years that was foreshadowed in last year's budget communication. Not only will this improve our energy infrastructure's reliability and resilience to natural disasters, 
invoked by climate change, but it will also help to rehabilitate critical infrastructure. Turncrest says when the country puts this crisis in the past, government will return to its fiscal consolidation plan. Cleopatra Murphy, Sat and S Network News.